We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh. Oh, yeah. Do you know what makes us happy? Bringing our friends back for round two of Content is Profit. That's exactly what's happening today. Our incredible, beautiful friend is making a comeback. That is right, amigo. Not only that, but today's guest is the only guest we've had that talked about SEO. Yeah, baby. Ooh. So if you are tired of, play, of paying for ads and want a long-term solution to your traffic issues, this is the episode for you. This is the guest you need to pay attention. And this is the guest that you need to reach out and connect with after you listen to this entire episode, of course. Ooh, oh, yeah. He's actually outranked ABC Network, a billion-dollar brand. He has worked with Inc. 5000 and Shark Tank featured clients. And he wrote what could be easily, you know, the holy grail of SEO, the book Outranked. Does his power come from his beard? We shall see. Epic beard indeed, my friends. Please welcome author of outranked seo wizard and the king of sarcasm <laughs> hey, hey, hey. thank you guys can i tell you i'm just here selfishly for your energy i don't even care what we talk about yes let's just have an awesome conversation about whatever comes to the table <laughs> hey i gotta i gotta share something with you so i know you guys know josh 40 because that's how we met does, does the audience know josh 40 Yes. Pretty sure they yeah, do. pretty yeah. familiar. We've we've shared his story. Uh, we've worked with him. Uh, he's actually coming to the show again, part two next week. Yeah. So yeah. Well, this beautiful art piece is <laughs> is courtesy of Josh Forty. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my gosh! It's, for for, for, for if those you can't see, if you're listening on audio, it's just a blanket of of repeating f like four variations of my face and my kids. What's funny is. My family's just owned it. My kids love it. They call it the dad blanket. When we go on road trips, my wife steals it. And she's like snuggled up in the front seat and my beard is like taking on a life of its own. Dude, that's a bit. You will never be able to shave your beard now. Yeah. I can't. Uh, I really can't. I don't know what I got myself into. Yeah, it's, it's they, your they, identity. They, it's a brand. Yeah, they put the beard in a pedestal, man. Now it can, <laughs> you cannot take it down. <laughs> I can't. And in um, real life, yeah. it's so crappy. It's just so patchy. It's all fake. It's not real. <laughs> Just like Fonzie, 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 Fonzie plugs it so up. majestic. I grab a sharpie and I fill it up in the in the gaps, <laughs> and be, you know, in here you cannot tell with because of the camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, hey, that, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk. We got a, a lot of fun things we can talk about that can help the help the yeah. audience. Obviously, SEO. We can sure. talk about social proof and whatever else comes up. Mm, absolutely, Damon. Be, before we start, I, I'm sure you know the audience is itching to have an answer to this question. It's a follow up mm. from last episode. Have you learned how to play the guitar? <laughs> no, that guitar has not moved. It is still in the same place from last it is, time. It is the same place. <laughs> so, so yeah. if you didn't catch the first episode, um, you know, COVID hit uh, around that time, and so I thought, well, maybe business is going to take a little time out for a minute, and I'll get, I'll find that extra hour in the day. And I really wanted to pick up guitar, so I ordered a guitar on Amazon, and I'm so glad I got it because like a week later, everybody else had the same idea, and they were all sold out for eternity. And then I get the guitar. I'm so excited. I set it down, waiting for my downturn in COVID, and the opposite happened, and business has doubled, and the guitar has sat there and gathered dust ever since. But then it's become such a great conversational piece that it's almost like I should leave it there intentionally. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm about to bring actually the guitars that I have in my room and put them in the background for that same purpose. <laughs> I do not play either, you know? He like, yeah. And he has two, man. Like he went all crazy and he's like, dude, should I buy a second one? I'm like, why? Well, it's better. You know? <laughs> don't even play the first one. Like, dude, I get, I, get, I get people that uh, I'll go on shows and people will talk about marketing and how you understand your audience. And then I'll, I'll get these people that, you know, they'll ask and they'll say, do you play guitar? And I'll tell them the story. But then I get these other people that they just fully commit to it. They're like, 
listeners, here's how you understand your audience. You walk into an office, like let's pretend I'm looking at Damon's office right now. I walk in, I see the guitar. I know he plays guitar and I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> I play guitar. Yeah, if, only you knew, <laughs> if only you knew. It's like yeah. Fonzie these books. He buys like literally like three books a week and just sit there. They, just, <laughs> they don't sit there. I, I read them. I'm a, I'm a slow reader. So I acquire books at a faster pace that I can read them. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, but when I'm done with the book that I'm reading, I'm like, well, I got options now, you know, <laughs> which one am I going to pick? Yeah. Speaking of books, Damon, dude, you have one book that just released also in the audio version. Thank God. Uh, because I am <laughs> a, a very slow reader and that was the only way that I was able to consume it. Right. And I, I remember very vividly one of the first stories in your book about a ranking ABC and it's like literally a fun project. And then how you started with your car website mm -hmm. hobby. And and I think it's incredible how you how you simplified SEO uh, for people. It's like to me, I was really honestly like very intimidated. Right, I jump on a call with you after, right yeah. after. I'm like, oh man, like everybody needs this, right? So, uh, do you want to share a little bit of of that book? So, if people are are interested, we're actually gonna leave the link right below, and they can go uh, get either the audio version or the physical version. So, or uh, both, or both. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I don't know. I've heard that if you listen to the audiobook as you read, you get high retention. So just get both. I try that. That's, I, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work. But yeah. Whatever I'm, works. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> the choice is yours. It's right in the middle. So you can, you can go ahead and do that. Both of them. Yeah, if you want. So yeah, I wrote the, I, it took about two years to write the book because I didn't want to write some like half ass SEO book that was just a technical guide. I wanted to offer a technical guide. But like the first, like one of the first lines in the book, it says, let's be honest, a book about SEO doesn't sound like the sexiest topic. And so I had to take that into consideration and go, okay, how do I, how do I start with fun, entertaining stories like the ABC story, like the car website story, but still underscore the importance and the impact and the potential of SEO. So it's, it's a legit book. It's 135 pages. And I start the first few chapters just on sharing some stories like how I outranked ABC's The Bachelor from when I was yeah. just newly married, no kids in my crappy makeshift office with my old inherited computer. And mm -hmm. then how I went into what ultimately started my career is I had a car enthusiast website. I used to be really into cars. And so I started like an online community website. And then the short story of that is I, I started to get a big following. So then I said, how do I make this better for the following? And then I started to learn web design. And then as it continued to increase, I said, how do I monetize this? And so then I got into marketing. And from there, I was the guy that did crappy websites on the side, like we all have a friend that does for several years. And then I continued to improve on my skill set until I was able to build up a side hustle. And then a couple of years into it, I said, you know, the side hustle is making 50% of my income, but the day job's taking up 80% of my time. So I said, this sounds like as calculated a risk as I can take where it's going to suck to quit the day job and lose 50% of my income. But if I can pay my bills, this is probably as safe as a bet as I'm going to get. So that's when I, so I go through kind of like some of those stories. And then now here we are, um, I've, I've owned the SEO national for 14 years. Now we do seven figures a year and I got, I just hired 10 people last month in just one month. So now I got 30 employees. So I walk through that whole journey in the book of, of how to grow a business, not, not just from a marketing standpoint, um, not just from my business, but how can you, how can you apply this to your business, whether it's service based or that's retail based, whatever it is, how you can scale SEO, just like Lewis said, without overcomplicating it. Like it's really not that there's some technical parts to it, but the, the, the core of SEO is really who can do a lot of really basic things who can juggle them the best, the longest. It's not a ton of rocket science. It's just being consistent with the basics. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I, I, and I love it. And I think this is something that people need to talk more about. I remember having a conversation or our interaction on social because you are pretty active on social as well. And it was, um, it's funny how the cycles go, right? SEO, is, it was the sexy thing yeah. a, a while back. And then we go back and there's like all this flashy stuff in front of it, but it, it's coming back, right? And it's like, well, okay, well, we always mm -hmm. land on SEO at the end of the day, right? And uh, and for us, I want to I wanna be fully transparent here. Like for us, there's no site or no blog. That's why we called Damon and, and consulted <laughs> with him. We're like, what is the next step, right? Because for us, the minimal Bible 
product or content that we could put out uh, out there was the show and then on social and now we're getting into a point where it's like okay what's next and and the question i put here the question that changed everything like you said like how do i make this better for the following and that's exactly the same thing that we're asking ourselves it's like how do we actually make it better for the following and get this message out even more right on a yeah. consistent basis over time that can sustain time that's the important thing mm -hmm. right so um I, I think it resonates so much and i encourage people right go go check out the book right if you are not familiar with seo i think this is a great way to start if you are familiar with it you know i think it's a great way to continue and definitely uh apply those principles right because uh it's incredible it's literally a blueprint so thank yeah. you Demo, for, for putting yeah. that out there um, yeah, um yeah. oh yeah sorry Demo, go ahead you brought up a good point about SEO coming full circle. Um, I've been talking about that a lot lately. The last couple months it is obviously where I'm 14 years into it. I never went away and SEO never went away, but mm -hmm. the masses, you're right. It seemed like the masses saw those shiny objects. Like here comes click funnels, here comes Facebook ads, here comes Google AdWords. There's nothing wrong with those things. But what's interesting to me is that people are more willing to invest in a platform that they don't own. You don't own Facebook. You don't own that audience. You never will. But with a website, you own that asset. All the time and money you're putting into it will, as you said, sustain. It will scale. It will continue to grow. And it will it will continue to bring a bigger return on your investment. So a lot of times, pay, paid ads make sense, right? The, the sexy thing about paid ads is that they're a lot quicker than SEO. But what I think a lot of people overlook is so, sometimes arguments I hear from other marketers is, well, SEO is slow. Okay. They're not wrong, but their argument is that I can have a paid ad account up and running within a day or two, which is true. But what mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't talk about is your paid ad is up in a day or two, but it's not profitable in a day or two. You are burning money just as long as you're burning money on SEO. Like at the very minimum, it's weeks, if not months to break even, let alone make a profit. And so it's like the same turnaround time, give or take but you yeah. own the asset with SEO. And then the other argument is, well, SEO seems like a moving target and all these different things. I can understand that argument, but like we were saying, if you stick to the basics, it's not that complicated. But then when you compare that to ads, how many days do you guys see on, how many, how many times a day on social media do you see a friend's ad account gets shut down and they're trying to figure out how to turn it back on? Or does anybody have another one they can tap into? Like, I don't have to deal with any of that mess with SEO because it's just the asset that we own or the clients own, just the website. And it's completely yeah. in our control. Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. I, I love it, man. Like, uh, again, um, to us or to me, at least, it was the... It is the next logical step. We were at an event last, uh, last Friday and we're like, man, like it's such... So much information that that we share with people not only on the show and and what we mentioned earlier the golden boulders where it's like what do you, how can we make it better like what, what you said right like the, i have the, an emotional tie to golden boulders because joe hansen is where i came in and i and, and i yeah. introduced you to joe. so i love every time i hear that <laughs> oh man i love it i love that that came out with yeah with joseph he's awesome too <laughs> uh, anyways Dude. so you're at an event yeah well my brother just walked out because i guess he's opening up the window because we were a little bit dark in here. I, thought, I don't know what he was about to say. He said, you were in an event. What event? Yeah. yeah so, so, you know, mo most of our artists know that we partner with, with PodMax and every every 60 days or so we go to, to a live Gosh. With, with Josh and, and Eric, right? Eric I got to tell you a story about Josh after you finish yours. Yes, right. yes. Uh, we, we, talked, exclusive. we talked about this. Yes, uh, exclusive for the show. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a good story. So, uh, um, anyways, and and we had some people in there, and massive light bulb moment of like how can how else can we multi-purpose the content? That that's a conversation that we've been having with a lot of the people that we help to the people that have been in our forty five live. It's changing the mindset of how do I repurpose something that I already did that it might not be working and like blah blah blah. Right? I'm like I hate the word repurposing, but I was like. <laughs> Uh, cancel it. Get on, like, get on that audience. Shut that word down. <laughs> I know. Uh, but how how can we actually create? Right? How can we become those strategic creators? And from the very beginning, 
have that output in mind, whether that's social, whether that's SEO assets, whether that's like email market, what are we attaching our content from the very beginning, right? And that has come obviously with time and execution after 160 episodes. And it goes back to that. It's like, what? how can I add more value to, to my audience, right? What is that avenue that I need to be loud and provide value to? Because I know that we can help them, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and some of those assets where on a site where we present resources and we present like the notes and we can like, if they want to listen, here's the other option, right? And right now there's different channels and it's worked really well, but now we've found ourselves in this position where it's like, what's next? And it's super exciting to go to go that route and be like, super awesome. By the way, we've invested zero dollars in ads as well. And uh, you know, and, and there's ways that, mm -hmm. that we can do that sustainable consistently. And uh, this is why this conversation is so exciting to me. I, I wrote down here, being consistent is the ultimate advantage, man. And, you know, like whether sure. you go with like ads or SEO, you got to stay consistent with it. The, the, the issue that I'm seeing with people is that ads is the shiny thing. It's like the quick win that everybody wants to have. They go without the understanding of all the money it requires to test and come up with like a winning campaign. Right. And then they're like burn out. They hate the medium and they're like, oh, I don't want to try it anymore. And then they yeah. quit. Right. When in turn, I if they had the mindset of long-term sustainable success, right? I, I'll feel people would go, and maybe I'm wrong with this. Like they will go more with SEO, right? Um, maybe there is more people going with SEO. And I have no idea. It, it's kind of back to Lewis's comment about it coming full circle. So uh, we've always, we've grown year after year for those 14 years. Mm -hmm. And so it's wow. not that SEO has ever went away. It's just that, there's there's the shiny objects that get in front of it but yeah. where that thing where it's coming where we're talking about it coming full circle and we're talking about the pros and cons of of paid ads versus seo like it's going to vary it's going to vary based on your product or your service i'm not here to say one is better than the other i think there's there's different opportunities um based on your circumstance or, or a combination of them but what i'm seeing is like the overall perception and stereotypes are starting to shift a little bit back towards SEO because of those things we talked about, because of ad accounts getting shut down, because of always having to fight for a budget, because of always having to turn off and on ads because of ad fatigue. And so I'm starting to see a lot of people come back and go, come back to SEO for different reasons than they used to. They still come to SEO because they want to increase organic sales, but now I'm starting to have part of the conversation of, I'm just sick of Facebook ads. And I, like, there's some people that you and I, I won't, I won't say who, but there's some big social media influencers that you and I know that we've had conversations off the record where it's just like Damon if you would have told me about SEO a year ago I would have thought it was the dumbest thing but now it's like the sexiest sounding thing and I want in <laughs> so so even these gurus are going man this is exhausting dealing with these things yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely I want to jump in that bandwagon man we we definitely need to to get our stuff together and and do the I, SEO we, we've talked about it. I mean my brother told me about the conversation you guys had about the you know, using the ep the podcast episodes for SEO reasons, like mm -hmm. building the site and stuff Ooh, like that. It's gonna be so good. Um, I'm curious. Yeah. I I, I want to leave that topic a little bit towards the end, you know, because of course we sure. use it as a book, so we need to leave the open loop for the yeah. end of the episode. Oh, duh. Of course, you know, <laughs> basic <laughs> marketing one on one, exactly. Uh, but I'm curious. Like, besides that long term, uh, kind of like play that requires to go into SEO. What yeah. is the thing that is holding people from from actually doing it, from from giving it a shot? I think it's just proper education. You know, there's just just like all forms of digital marketing, there's some bad guys in the industry, and SEO is one of the older types of online marketing, and so there's some stereotypes, and, and so there's a, there's still a lot of misconceptions uh, depending on who your audience is and or who you followed or you know who you what wrong SEO you chose in the past. And so there's been some damage done. And, and I think that's really why I've excelled is because I'm just very transparent about those things. Yes, you got burned and here's why. Yes, this is why you, you're, you invested a bunch of money and you don't have anything to show for it. These mm -hmm. are the things to look out for. Like we talked we talk about how we're gonna touch on social proof. And so a lot of those things that I go out and do on social proof, is exactly that like i don't hide from any of the scars that the seo industry has and i just come out and i go here's a problem here's a solution here's a question here's the answer and so yeah. i just come at it and, because the i don't want the clients that are nervous i don't want the clients that are insecure and scared so if i can help 
heal them or proactively advise on how to do SEO the right way, then the more that I can help them, the more that they can help us make a profitable campaign for them. So I just address everything head on. Mm. I, I love what you said about you don't want the clients that are scared and nervous. So you just go out there and try to like heal them, right? I'm doing air quotes in, in here um, through, you know, putting them at ease, educating them and say, hey, this is the right way to do it. And don't get me wrong, I, I have this feeling, correct me if I'm wrong, I have this feeling you do it uh, not with the sense of like, oh, I'm just going to give you this information so then you can turn into my client. But it's like, this is the right thing to do. I want to share it because mm -hmm. you love the SEO space and you don't want it to have a bad rep. And then mm -hmm. people are seeking you after that because guess what? You are the, the guy that helped them move forward, move past those fears, uh, all those issues that they were having, right? And I think that is something, regardless of the industry that you're at, especially in today's uh, world where the customers, you know, have, have so much power before making a decision. I think mm -hmm. that is the way to do it is actually uh, actual empathy, right? It's like caring for the yeah. other person and not do it with just like an intention behind the back. It's like, hey, look, freely, this is what I can do for you. This is how I can help you. Just take it and then you're just going to build that trust. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I don't care so much about what other SEOs talk about because there's always going to be some bad guys. And I think that's that's helped me by just staying in my lane and not really caring what other people talk about in the SEO space. But you are right in the fact that it's just the right thing to do. So I may not I may not be out necessarily to protect the industry, but I am out to to protect the consumers and give them a fighting chance. Because if you're going to invest this much money for for this long of a time frame you ought to be willing to have to be, be able to make an educate have an educated discussion on what is the right strategy for you who is the right type of person what type of questions to ask and so yeah when i get on when i get on social media and i just say here's all the answers yeah i don't have i never send them i never send them to a funnel i don't even have a funnel i don't have an email list i don't have anything i but i have a website but i don't even send them there either because i don't want to convert somebody in the in the in the social media post i want to showcase my exer expertise and establish the relationship and so i just give away everything because there's three types of from my perspective there's three types of content consumers so one is going to be the type of person that takes your information and runs fantastic you just help somebody i don't care that they didn't become a client because they were never my client anyway the second type of content consumer is somebody that's going to internalize your information build a relationship with you subconsciously, and then they will either become a client later or they will refer somebody because now they trust you. The third type of content consumer is the person that becomes a client. So yeah. like, which one of those is bad? So there's no reason not to just give away all the answers. True, true. I love it. I love the the, the three types of clients. I'm, I'm actually just taking that notes in here and just writing it down. Uh, we love making like a, a carousel after all this um, conversations that we have, and I think the carousel that yeah. we're gonna make about this conversation it's might be about be, this it's one. Yeah. Be good, yeah, it's. I mean, there's so many things that we could obviously create content out yeah. of these conversations. Uh, but I, I, I love that take on. I'm just hoping is is that perspective, man. And we, we talk about perspective so many times. Um, you change your your perspective, and even the runner, right? You're like, okay, I help you, right? Like the other day, for example, my brother was on a sales call. And we were pretty open with our process. Like we show people our process as we're having these conversations with them. So they, they can see the work that it takes on the back end to do what they're doing, right? Um, yeah. And <laughs> this, uh, obviously not saying any names, right? But the guy <laughs> was watching. And all, after the call, my brother turns and he's like, dude, this guy was just like taking screenshot after screenshot after screenshot like i could hear it in the conversation like yeah <laughs> <"Right>? <laughs> i've had that like, mostly whatsoever so it's like awesome man like yeah. that's cool you know like if we help them to put his own process together here here's absolutely what, amazing here's the aftermath of that right like to me it was obviously a shock like i think it was the first time that happened <laughs> yeah. to me i was like well that that's i mean dude if you if you tell me that i, I can send you the recording like this is <laughs> like have it yeah. like it's fine yeah, i make it weird <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So, but here's what happened, right? Like, uh, that ended up like I didn't mention it. Nothing happened, right? And he's been like watching. He's been there, right? And then he sent a message. He's like, "Hey, Luis, I just want to share this with you. I uh, I closed my highest ticket client ever 
because of the things that we talked about during that sales call. And I was yeah. like, man, that is so cool. And that's that that thank you for sharing that with us. Social yeah. proof of the system, right? That that works and yeah. he was able to help and serve some other people. Guess what? He we're launching a podcast in, in May 1st. So if you're listening, guys, send us a, DM. a workshop. Huh? A oh. workshop. You said a podcast. A we're workshop. launching a workshop. A workshop. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Workshop. <laughs> May 1st, content momentum workshop. Guys, go to send it, send us a DM, please. Uh, but anyway, so that when we had this conversation, I'm like, hey, by the way, we have this coming up. Do you want to be a part of it? And he's mm -hmm. like, dude, I'm in. So same thing, right? Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's what we're talking about, right? And now he's he's very excited. We're very excited to have him on and you know, the limited spots that we have. So again, mm -hmm. it, it's a good situation, right? It's like let's yeah. let's share, let's share away, right? And I personally had a very big struggle with that at the very beginning. And and it's something that I had to work internally with with myself, right? I, I had to look inside. I'm like, why why am I feeling this way? Why am I being so protective over this, right? When when sharing it is is proven to be helpful in any in all the ways, right? In all this, the ways. Why, Damon, do you think yeah. do you ever have that struggle? Um or or if you didn't, like why um mm. why do people feel that way? Uh, I, I, I'm sure I did at some point. Um, I, I don't think it was probably as dramatic as, as a lot of other people. I think it's just human nature, right? Where it's like, why would I give away my hard acquired knowledge and assets? So I don't think there's anything wrong with having that initial feeling, but when you, when you sit back and like rationalize it and truly give it time to go, why does it matter? It doesn't freaking matter because like your, your example, either one of two types of things is going to happen with the type of lead that just takes your stuff and runs. You're either going to have a good outcome like you had where they either become like an ambassador or a client, or let's say, let's say they, let's say they didn't take that and run, but just the mentality of that type of client is the worst type of client. Like those are the type of clients that are going to get in your way. They're going to question every move you make. They're going to be the ones that want 24 seven availability. So it's almost like it's a, it's a good qualifying problem because either they go, like I had one client that went and tried to do SEO on their own or they, they, they were a client, but they were like on a budget end. Then they're super grandfathered. I don't, I don't negotiate rates. They are what they are, but these guys have been with us forever. And so they're like grandfathered in and, and now we're like, quadruple the rates over here doing all these other things and they're like oh, we're content with you know we understand we're getting what we pay for and that's okay and they were very much a blue collar industry old school kind of traditional boots on the ground kind of sales and they've gone through the process where they're like i don't need the entirety of seo then phase two was like i'm gonna try it on my own and then phase three was like damn this is hard and then phase four was like my time is better spent somewhere else hire damon so like it's almost a good thing to have people have that hesitation because they're either yeah. going to realize the value of your time and your service and then be a better client or if they don't they're a crappy client that you don't want anyway <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay so by the way you, you what you just mentioned it, it it threw me back to a conversation that we had earlier on the process that we have i mean People can go out there and multiply the content no matter what. Like there's tools that facilitate this process. That's totally fine. You know, if you guys want details on how we do it, uh, absolutely. I'm happy to jump on a call. But, or join the workshop or join in the May, workshop May 1st because we're going to be yeah. opening the doors the behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. Hey, so you guys have a workshop coming up? On May 1st. Great question. So, yeah, Indeed, great we question. do. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Damon. Uh, but but here's, here's the thing, right? Like the the conversation was we've, we've had comments, right? We have actually have also clients that... Mm -hmm did that right they're like i can do this myself right and it's like and then they either drop off because the consistency aspect is not there the time is in, is invested in different ways and and then they have a conversation it's like man we gotta get, go back so i remember uh the the we we were shown an app that automates some of the process right not yeah. not not the entire process, like the tip of the iceberg process, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and we're having a conversation right now. It's like, how else can we improve every single day? We're like, how can we improve our customer experience? How can we improve their journey? How can we improve? Same thing, same as the conversation that we have in the front end for the content, same thing happens on the back end, right? And it's like hashtag undispensable, right? And uh, and I came to the realization the other day when I was shown one of these things, we're like, they're the co your competition. I'm like, no, they're 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 literally serving us our clients in a platter, in a silver platter because these are people that are going there. Some of them might be mm -hmm. successful at it, but they're going to find the pain that this is yeah. or the time that this requires to do it 
well. And if that's the vehicle that they're choosing, right? Perfect. Mm -hmm. you know, we are coming in for the solution after that, right? So we're like, we're here to save you. Like, if you really believe this is the thing that you need to be doing, 100%, we're here with a process that's going to speed up this process, you know, tenfold. Um, so that was a pretty awesome uh, realization internally that I did. I, I think I've, uh, I don't think I've shared it with you. Yeah, Fonzie. you um, Yeah, I don't share everything with you. You Fonzie, guys sorry. responded. <laughs> yeah, we just so, bonded. So good, yeah. Uh, but, but it came out of that. And, and you know, uh, you that have years of experience on the SEO field, you know, you continue to see that trend, right? Going up and then up mm -hmm. and down. And you're there to, to help and serve and, and provide amazing value and results, which is so important. Which, if Fancy doesn't have any other questions, I want to transition to the unique, unique uh, output that you have for your for your content, for your social. Not only the SEO side of things, because we, we've talked about for like 20 minutes of, almost before the show, <laughs> on your unique take on, on how publishing. And, and I want to pre-frame my next questions with, we often talk about creating your own consistency, your own cadence. Like, how do you actually feel comfortable publishing, right? For us, it's the show and then everything mm -hmm. that comes after, right? That's how we've been able to craft our own thing. And we try to mimic other people for the, the last four or five years, right? Never ended up well. Never, We were never able to hold consistency, nothing. And we really got a lot of traction as soon as we created our own framework, right, to, yeah. to do this. You have your own. Can you walk us through your amazing framework? Uh, yeah, so so specific to social media and and lead gen that way, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So social media, it's it's exactly what you said. It, it's a cadence you got to figure out. You have to kind of do the dance and figure out what your dance is, and, and you have to suck. Like there's no way around it. You have to get on and figure out what you want to post about, what you don't want to post about, and then start posting and not posting about those things. And then the problem that you're going to run into though is the gray area where you're like, I want to post this thing because. Other people talk about it. That one guru does it. It sounds sexy. And then you post it and it just sounds so fake and you feel <laughs> awkward. And then you like have to figure out what those boundaries are. And so I did the same thing. I mean, for as much as I like social proof is is going to outpace our referrals this year. And so in our 14 years, referrals have always been our biggest source of leads. And this year, it, it was probably about equal in 2020. 2021, it's way ahead of referrals already. And I'm only like two years into this. This is not something that I'm going to proclaim that I'm an expert at, but I found what works for me. And so the journey for me to get to this point was it, it actually started unintentionally. It started because I was just burned out on social media. I didn't, it, it wasn't, it wasn't all the drama, which I agree is there. It was just a lack of focus. I just felt like I wasn't really investing my time produ productively. And so I got to a point where I just shut down my Facebook and we all know that when you delete it, it doesn't really delete. So I went the next level and bless my wife because I told her, I said, I'm just going to delete everything. And so I had her log in and she manually unfriended every single friend I had manually deleted every post I made manually deleted every comment on other people's posts that I had made. And it took her three weeks. And that was, was when I wasn't even like hyperactive. I was just, you know, probably like a casual user. I couldn't imagine if she was to do it now, it'd take her a lifetime. But she went through and just wiped everything out. And so there I sat with a blank Facebook and then I hit delete. And so I, I let it sit there for probably two months. And the only other platform that I kind of used was LinkedIn. And but not even not even really I, I wouldn't even say I really did. Like I had a profile I was gathering dust on it. I had maybe yeah. like five posts in 10 years, I don't even know. And um, I just kind of let, that one wasn't active, so I just let it sit there. I didn't delete that one, it just kind of sat there. So then what happened over six, eight weeks or so is I started to think, well, why can't I do social media my way? Why can't I figure out what my way is? Why can't I post about the things that I like, which are A, I like to help new entrepreneurs, B, obviously I like to talk about SEO, and C, I like to talk about my appreciation for my wife and my kids. But here's the balance that I had to figure out, the, the dance that I say you got to do, is how do I blend business, with, so I have a purpose on social media, with personal, because of my interest in showing my affection for my wife and kids. And not only balance that, and, and so what I mean by balance is how do I keep my audience's interest? But then also how do I balance it from my perspective? Because as much as I'm a public figure and I want to talk about my wife and kids, I'm hyper private about my family life. So like as you listen to this and you go, 
look up any of my posts, you'll see I consistently talk about my wife and kids. But what you won't see is their faces. You won't see me mention their names. And so I don't publish any identifiable information. But then the next layer to that dance I had to figure out is how do I do that and protect that while sharing my love for them without being fake? I can't go, hey, son, turn around so I can get a picture of the back of your head so it's unidentifiable. <laughs> so what I, have to, what I had to figure out was what are the real pictures I can share that really show the moment without the fakeness? So like a good example is, you know, last winter um, I took my kids sledding. And I, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, the fun time we had because we took the neighbor kids and they all had fun. And so I went through my, so I didn't stage a photo. I just went back and looked at what photos I had so I could share the moment. And then I found a real photo, but it was of me getting a picture with the kids in the background running to the hill. And so they're running away. So that's a real picture, but then it's also protect, it, it shares what I want to share, but it protects yeah. the privacy that I want to protect. So I had to figure out what that dance was. And it took me probably three months of screwing up, of posting mm. something that didn't resonate or posting something and then I felt uncomfortable and I deleted it. And there's no way to expedite that process because nobody knows what the right answers of content is but you. So you have to trip over yourself to figure out those answers. But where it really started to click was at about those three months is when I started to get leads, people private messaging me and saying, hey, I really resonated with that story. And they, they connect with you on the private stuff, but they hit you up because they know your area of expertise because you talk about what you do and work too. But it's the personal things that make them connect with you. And so then I started getting leads. And then by the six month mark, I had, I don't know, a couple tens of thousands of dollars in deals. And then where I stopped quantifying it was at about the nine month mark. At about nine months into this, so three months of screwing up and then six months of polishing it up. I had 150 grand in extra contracts, not wow. counting what we were already doing, not counting other sources of leads or referrals, just from social media posts, an extra 150 grand. And so at that point I said, okay, this is clearly worth spending my time. It's, it's personally rewarding because I can share my stories. I can resonate with people. I can engage with other people in the way that I want to engage, but it's supporting the, the growth of the business as well in a way that I like to do because I don't like the sales process. Almost all of us hate the sales process. Our customers hate the sales process. And so now what happens is people will often connect with me, obviously go where your audience is. So I'm not on TikTok. So for me, <laughs> it's mostly LinkedIn and Facebook. But what's interesting is people will connect with me on LinkedIn for my expertise and then follow me over to Facebook and get hooked because of the personal stories. And like I said, I don't post about landing pages. I don't send them to funnels or opt-ins. They'll private message me and they'll say, look, I already know what you do. What's next? Like, where's the go button? And so it eliminates the sales process, breaks down the sales walls. They already know what you do. It's not an awkward conversation because they've subconsciously established a relationship with you. And now they're a better client too, because they're not going to ask you 5,000 questions that get nowhere for either of you, but are just kind of the common sales qualification process that everybody does just to do. So yeah. I'm going to take a nap. That was a lot. <laughs> wow. That was a master class. Man. I love it. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. Let me tell you, the name of the show is Content is Profit. And then this part is like in the in the banner image of the show, but nobody really, I don't think nobody reads that, is the pursuit of the frictionless sale. And what you yeah. explain right now is that is that frictionless sale. You're creating so much trust with people. And at the same time, you're having fun. Like there's barely any friction from from either side, right? Like you're now yeah. finding find process that you enjoy, a uh, voice that you, you know, is true to yourself. I mean, we were talking about how freaking awesome your banner picture on Facebook is, right? The marketing influencer <laughs> is like for those watching, for those listening right now, go and follow Damon on Facebook. The links are going to be at the bottom of the of the show right now. Um, but I'm going to try to illustrate it, right? It's just like a, a white background with a Lamborghini. Lamborghini. I say Lamborghini a, all a the car, time. A cartoon Lamborghini. Yeah, a, a cartoon Lambo. Uh, yeah, an illustration cartoon Lambo. And then just your head kind of like 
popping out of the window. Oversized another, head. <laughs> oversized head. There we go. And then at the bottom is like it says marketing influencer, but it's written like if it was written in Microsoft Paint, Paint by yeah. a five year old, pretty much. <laughs> and then and the E and the E and the R at the end of influencer. I ran out of space, so I had to curve it up along the side of the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing, and I love it. That's a good. That's a good other uh, addition to what we were just talking about. But uh, you know, the the you talk about you know how do you figure out what your cadence is, and for me, like I have to figure out another balance. I have to figure out is, you know, I do I do big business. I have a big team. We work with big companies. So how do I communicate that I am an expert in what I do, but also not be that barfy guru that's only posting pictures of them at the beach, that's only posting pictures of them in, in next to real Lamborghinis, you know, who knows whose yeah. Lamborghini they are. And so for <laughs> me, it's like fun to poke at those things because we all know that the majority of that is fake. Like how many times did that guy take that picture? Is that really his car? Like where did he rent that unicorn from? And so for me, it's like fun to, to it, I enjoy poking fun at that because it resonates because the type of people that I do business with don't want that crap. Like they know the fakeness, not all of it, but they know when that's fake. And so yeah. there's to some people, they uh, on one end of the spectrum, they, they might go, Damon's not an expert because he's being a goofball. But to my audience, they're saying Damon is an expert because he's past that phase of faking it and now he's having fun with it and calling it out. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I, I love this because if you go to, for example, I feel like I, I post less personal pictures in there in, in my Instagram than my brother do. And it's because I don't like the, let me post for a picture, <laughs> right? And like take yeah. that picture of me looking into the sunset and then I'll post yeah. that with like some caption. Who like, takes these pictures? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you know, and don't get me wrong. Like I used to, I I did photography for a while, and I love taking good quality pictures, but I hate the photo <laughs> shoots. I hate it. Like telling people, like, oh yeah, look over here, look over there. Like I didn't enjoy that. I I enjoyed the candid pictures. Like let me go to an event yeah. and take a picture of a kid that's actually having fun in there. Right. Yeah. Or or the mom and dad with the, the kid that, you know, they're grabbing a, an ice cream and they're all having fun, but they don't know I'm taking the picture. Sounds kind of creepy right now, but I promise <laughs> they, I promise they pay, they pay the event for this stuff, right? So like, those are the type of stuff. And I'm like, I, I wish I had that stuff for myself, like candid pictures, not not like fake, you know, portrayed in there, but I don't have anybody that takes pictures of me. So now I'm I'm like you know what? I, I like your take on it. And I told you before we started the show, I'm like, I might respectfully steal your idea. And, you know, I, that that is like one of the biggest forms of compliments, right? When people steal your ideas. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, I might just oversize, take a bunch of pictures, well, we got, oversize my head and just like start putting them everywhere. <laughs> well, that's what we got to tell the audience is what the idea is that you're taking. So what, what we were talking about before we jumped on is... I told my team, so I, I, I like taking, you know, I have, um, like I said, with my kids, obviously we all have photos in our, in our phone, but sometimes like with the fake Lamborghini picture, I do enough of those because that's kind of my shtick at this point is, is to go find like a fake influencer picture, or it doesn't even have to be an influencer picture. It can just be like something random. Like I'll put my face on a duck for some reason. And so what I told my team is like, here's, I sent him like 20 or 30 pictures of me and I said, crop out my head in all these different poses and save just the head in a transparent ping file. So I literally have a Dropbox folder <laughs> of just my face in, in 20 or 30 different poses. And so with the Lamborghini picture, I can, whatever, whatever the topic is that I'm talking about, I can have a great picture to support it in 20 seconds, 10 seconds to go find it on a stock free site, and then 10 seconds to drop in the cropped head that's already ready for me to go and then just layer it together and I'm done. Yeah, Dude, absolutely. It's amazing. I think it's yeah. it's a it's a genius uh, framework. Honestly, I I love what you said. And this might have flown under the radar for many people. Is Damon is an expert because he's past that. Because right now, like past the whole flashy whatever thing, right? Like, and and we when we change perspective on our show, right? Because everybody was like, you should do this and you should do that, and then you should post this way, and it should look this this other. We're like. 
to the hell with all that. We're just going to do the show the way that we want to do it, right? To the point that we mm -hmm. do everything live. And, you know, if we screw up, we screw up. The other day yeah. we had an interview with this incredible entrepreneur from, from England, and we completely forgot to record the video and the audio intro. <laughs> and like, her reaction was like the best reaction ever that we've ever yeah. gotten. And she's like, oh, my God. And uh, it, that's not there. So we had to go and be like, hey, by the way, guys, like this is exactly what happened, yeah, right? And We I just recorded an extra intro at the end. Like, hey, we messed up, yeah, so yeah. you won't it see the intro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that authenticity, I think it obviously resonates. And, you know, I think that has been the theme of, of today's conversation. It's like, how do you get there, right? Like, and, and have enough confidence of, of what you, what the values that you provide. And and uh, it goes back to, to our journey. Right now, we're, we're having a conversation yesterday with a team, and they're, they're changing some of the stuff that's coming out, right? And they're like, we're always like, what propose ideas. Like, what do you guys want to put out there, right? And they're, they're giving us this stuff, and we're like, absolutely, let's do it. But it's phase two. It's like, how can we now continue to do that? And, you know, we've been talking about starting a Twitch channel, which is totally unrelated. Mm. To the Dude, to the business content, Damon, we're gonna need you in that one. <laughs> it, that one is just for fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's the idea. It's the I've show. never done Twitch. Let's do it. <laughs> it. It's a show called Commenting Comments. Commenting Comments. Because the gold in the content, <laughs> it's always in the comments, man. Like if you scroll down and you start reading the stuff, you're gonna crack up, right? So uh that's a show literally we're just gonna go in social media, certain channels, and just start Dude, reading. That's comments legit. And stuff I like yeah. that. Uh, hey, 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 there we go. Right, yeah, we, we, go. we got our first guest approved. <laughs> yeah, look, it's... look, I got, I got the Damon Beard beard stamp. Yeah. Approved. Yeah, uh, approved. <laughs> All right, awesome. Awesome. proof of concept done. I, I, yeah. I, we want to encourage everybody that's like listening right now. Go test things out. I mean, this is the thing. Like, you don't have to fit in a, in a mold. There's processes to everything, right? And and this is what we've heart like we've talked about a lot. It's like. What is your framework? There's, there's different pieces that then you can align there, right? Like I'm sure there's a creative process for you on the caption writing, right? Or maybe you dominate it so much that you sit down and you do it, right? But that has to start somewhere. And with the time, the nine months that you were improving on that, it became a habit, right? And for us now, the show is a habit, right? The show, the way that we mm -hmm. produce the show is a habit and the processes are there for the team to take over, right? So what are those things as, like if you're listening right now, Look back at the things that you produce and the things that you put out there, and and are you being consistent? Yeah. Are you being comfortable with that, what you're saying? Like all these elements no. play a part. I'm I'm gonna sorry right before interrupting you here. Uh, yeah, interrupting Be you. before interrupting. No, you, I, unapologetically you, interrupting my brother. Yeah, 100%. Uh, <laughs> you know, talking about the, those frameworks that my brother is talking about and going off of the framework with the big heads, right? Which is absolutely amazing and genius. Uh, we did a bunch of like <laughs> backgrounds for the content is profit, like the one that you're seeing right now yeah. in the live. And we have kind of like elements, yeah. Yeah. little Ooh. PNG elements Ooh. that we kind of like follow, subscribe, crazy. or we go live on these days, a bunch of all those stuff. And we have them as PNG. So one of my things is sometimes I have these epiphanies, right? Like for example, being consistent is the ultimate advantage, right? And I'll go and I'll tweet it. Totally. I'll go on Twitter, I'll tweet it, and then I take a screenshot. And guess what? Now I have all the elements to create a Biz Bros branded post for my tweet, right? And I literally, my, my framework is I go in my Instagram stories and I put it on Instagram story right there. And then I post it my story, I save it, and then I can also put it as a post. And it, mm -hmm. it takes me like, five ten minutes is super yeah, quick you right? just create it's the same it's the same business concept that you always hear about where it's standard operating procedures you know what mm -hmm. are your processes and it, it, that that's that applies to everything in life uh you know it's whether you're doing seo whether you're doing content production podcast not repurposing because we're canceling that word like whatever it is that you're doing yes. it is it is totally just about consistency it's it's not so obviously you got to have some skill set but the skill set gets earned through consistency mm -hmm. so you don't have yeah. to be amazed i before we hit record i told you like I, I just been sucking at my workout routine lately because I can't get onto something that's consistent because between balancing like, you know, family time and time with my wife, my kids and then work hours and all that. So for me, I'm like, OK, well, I got to find something consistent because that's where the magic happens. So now there's like a bird refuge that's a mile away. So every morning when my wife runs the kids to the school, I got like 20 minutes to go hit that bird refuge and get back. And so that's what I've been doing like the last week. And so I just figured out. It may not 
be the sexiest thing that you want to do, but it's what is going to work best for me in my circumstance. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I mean, this episode is, I mean, and the gold is about to come too, because we're talking, we're, this episode, we're wrapping the show with the SEO gold, goldness. This uh, is full of golden boulders. Go golden boulders. Oh yes. man. Yeah. They can't wait. Hey, uh, let, 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 let me add, let me add one more thing though, before we switch off the social thing. Um, you know, when we, we joke about the Lamborghinis and, and all the fancy pictures, I'm not, I'm not discrediting the effectiveness of those getting likes and engagement. But here's what you have to realize is I don't care if that gets more likes because it's not the right people. Like, do you just want the vanity metrics to say I got 100 likes or do you want 10 likes and two of those people become your customer? Absolutely. And then the other thing is, is when I look at kind of along the same lines where you got to figure out what your dance is. The more I see like a bandwagon following to you need to do SEO this way, you need to do social media this way, you need to do whatever this way, the more my gut tells me that a different direction is probably the right path. And so don't get caught up in the trends because I'm not saying they're not effective. I'm just saying they're probably not sustainable. And so you got to yeah. figure out what is sustainable for you. Yeah, you, you hit it. You hit it right on point. We yeah. had a conversation. Do, do, do you actually hear that, Damon? Do, do, do you actually hear that I right mean, there? The crowd is going crazy. It's going oh, wild. Yes. Yes. They brought their horns and everything. Man. Yeah. Mm. I mean, oh, we had a conversation. I didn't grab my cowbell. Yes. If you're wondering about the cowbell, go listen to the first episode with Damon that uh, is mentioned. Was That's it episode 60 or 40 something? It was 40, 47. July last year. July. Yeah. Just go to July last year. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just go to your, like, time travel. Yeah, uh, you hit it, man. You hit it right on point. We had a conversation last week with Andrew Sullivan, who is the CMO of Viner Media. Right? Uh, nobody knows that company. So, uh, and <laughs> Gary Vee. Like, like I, I think people got the joke. <laughs> I know. Fonzie. I know. Damn, I, Fonzie, you, do you get it? Do you keep get going, it? Keep going. Keep going. Keep <laughs> going. Wow. And we were asking her about the because obviously they're fans of high volume. I consider we 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 do higher volume than most people out there with the amount of content that we put out. And we asked her like why that, and and she's like we're constantly testing. We're constantly putting ourselves out there. And every company that we help is we we do. We grab this information and it's like, how can they adapt it to their market, to the thing, to, to how they can execute? And it's exactly what you were saying, right? So uh, it it's just validates that and, and more people need to listen to this. More people need to know this because they're blinded by... By the lights? By the Lambos. Uh, blinded the Lambos. by the Lambo. Uh, there we go. Hey! Okay. That's good. <laughs> that's, that's gonna be the new Don't thing. Don't be blinded by the Lambo, guys. Don't be blinded by the Lambo. It's funny, though, because... Hashtag blinded by the Lambo. We actually got, like, <laughs> the, the portal that opened the door to the entrepreneurship world for so, us was... Ty Lopez in his garage <laughs> showing his Lamborghini. Here right? in my garage. <laughs> yeah, here in, my, here in my garage and stuff like that. And we're like, oh, what? We don't have the money. Dude, I did. I did. Uh, I I did one of my big head photoshops in his in his garage just last week. <laughs> really? Yes. That's awesome. Oh, so, Dude, so, that is so cool. So good. So it good. might even be in the. It might even be in the comments of my my yellow Lamborghini cover photo. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna leave all these links, guys, for for you. Go check him out. Go go check out this incredible uh, social proof, incredible post. Uh, I mean, it's so fun, so fun. Just it's explore so it, and fun. and how and then homework, homework. How can you apply it? How can you do it uh, consistently? Yeah. I, I think that's uh, that's great. All right, closing out the episode with SEO goldness. That's right. I, I know that we could potentially do like another whole episode of this, <laughs> but it's like, what is the 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 cliff notes, right? Like, how can people scale their 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 podcast or their platform, right, through SEO? What are some things that they can start looking at? Obviously, they should go and, and have a conversation with you and your team. Uh, but what are some things that they can start looking at today? So if you want to tackle, whether you want to tackle it on your own or not, like where you want to start is with your website structure, like the technical stuff. And and I know earlier, so you don't have to get super technical, but 
it, it, this part isn't time consuming. And here's why you start with the technical stuff. So if you if you understand the scope of SEO, there's a hundred things that go into it. But all of those things primarily fall into two categories. So one category is what you do on your website, and the other category is what you do externally to your website. And then in between there is content because you can have content on your website and then externally to your website. Now the reason why you start with the structure is because most of your gains are going to come from the content and external credibility, but those are only going to be effective as the foundation of your website is solid that is bouncing off of it. So you can do all this great content, you can get all this external credibility, but if it's going to a crappy website that loads slow and isn't mobile friendly, you're not gonna get very far. So where I recommend people start is just by making sure their website loads quickly. There's two free tools that you can use. One is called GT Metrics, it's just the letters GT and then metrix.com. And then there's another one called Google uh, Lightspeed, PageSpeed, so Lighthouse something yeah. they change the name all the time <laughs> so, so we can google, google up google speed checker just do that google google page speed checker there you go <laughs> anyways so you want to make sure ideally your website uh, the average is probably four to six seconds so if you can get three seconds or less that's going to put you ahead of most of your competition and the nice thing even though that's a little bit technical once it's done it's done like you don't have to always go fix your website like unless you go in and tinker with it and break something just get that done and over with then after that, focus on your content. Now, uh, what Fonzie said is, you know, map out your strategy. I'm a huge proponent of like basically an assembly line, right? And so the way that my team does it for clients, which most of you can apply to your website as well, is we front load the efforts in strategizing what the content play is going to be. So where that starts is what words can we make money with? And so it's the same thing with, with social media. You don't want all the likes in the world. You want the right likes. And so it's the same thing with what are you targeting on SEO? You don't want the word that has the biggest search volume. You want the word that has the best buyer intent. And so I would way rather have a word that maybe only gets a thousand searches a month, but it's going to bring me a hundred customers than a word that gets a million searches a month and is just too broad and doesn't apply buyer intent. And I get no customers off it just for the bragging rights to say I get a million searches. So you yeah. gotta figure out where you can make your money. Now, once you identify those key words that you're gonna target, that you can monetize, then you use that towards the foundation of your content strategy, because then you go, okay, I need to write content that can very specifically support those targets, because those are the targets that are gonna make me money. Now, after you understand that process, then you want to go back to tapping into the buyer intent. And so, did I did I share the fun story about Carl Malone last time? Does that no, ring a bell? I don't think so. Okay, so I'm going to give you a fun story. When we were working with the Utah Jazz, they have a retail division called the Team Store, and the goal was to sell more jerseys and merchandise and hats. And so, what they said is, okay, we want to sell them very. We want to focus on very specific players, newer star players like Donovan Mitchell, and then legacy players like Carl Malone. And so well, the reason why I bring this up is to tapping into the is is to reinforce tapping into the buyer intent. And so anybody else that's doing SEO on Carmel merchandise is going to do the same crap. It's going to be what teams did he play for? What was his high scores? What were his records? What college did he go to? How many years did he play for? Like all those statistical things. Now the problem with that is you're going to be fighting against all the other websites that are doing that, and it's not unique. Yeah. And so when you tap into the buyer intent, I'll give you another free tool that you can use. There's a website called answerthepublic.com. Mm -hmm. So through tools like answer the public, what, what that, the data in those websites are, you type in uh, a keyword. So in this case, Carl Malone, and it's going to tell you what your audience is already searching. So you don't have to guess. And then you can filter through those results and look for the unique opportunities. And so the Carl Malone example was, we started to see enough questions showing up about how did Carl Malone die, but Carl Malone's not dead. And so here's your opportunity because nobody else is writing it. Or in my case, us, our clients would have never thought of that topic, but through the data, it's telling us that that's what the market wants. And so from there, you it might be the wrong question, but you can come up with the right answer. So in that case, you go, here's the top 10 myths of how Carl Malone died. So you mm. address the question, you're probably the only person to talk about it because he's not dead. 
you tap into the buyer intent and you serve the market what it already wants instead of you guessing. So then they come in, it's got good buyer intent because it's a Car Malone fan, you're selling Car Malone merchandise, you address the question, by the way, here's his jersey. So you got to focus on what the audience and the market wants, not what you're going to shove down. It's not what you're going to shove down. What I, the long story short is focus on the strategy first, front load your efforts, align everything so you're heading down the right path ahead of time. Because otherwise, you're going to be months down the road writing all this content that serves no purpose. And then if you decide to pivot, you're starting from scratch. Like you can't really repurpose the, you can't really adjust the purpose of that historical content without writing entirely new content. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah Dude, that, I, I love it. I, I love yeah. that focus. Uh, I'm sorry for interrupting you. In <laughs> no, <laughs> like, the end. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I love that concept of of buyer intent because a lot. I feel personally, me, I I, I had that thought of you want to go for the most searches, what has the biggest search volume, but that might not be the thing that is going to get you right the more the most buyers, and it's probably. The big, the most search volume is probably going to be the most competitive as well. As well, probably most people operate under that thought process of if more people are searching for this, there's probably more buyers here. Yeah, I, I mean, I can give you a real quick specific example to that. We have a client who's been with us. That they're actually client number one. They've been with us for 14 years, and they are a contract manufacturing company. So they work on assembling like circuit board based products and electronics. And so when before we came in, they wanted to put a heavy influence on targeting the word circuit boards. Sounds reasonable, right? But then when you start looking at the data, they were spending 80% of their budget on targeting circuit boards and it brought zero sales because they don't sell circuit boards. They mm -hmm. sell the assembly of the final product. So the circuit boards come into them already made and then they put them into a greater good, like a TV, some sort of electronic device. So that's a good example of they, their gut told them circuit boards because that's where all the market was. Like that's where yeah. all the search volume was, but it's not their search volume. It's not their customers. So we were able to cut the, cut the budget substantially and increase their sales by just focusing on, on where the right buyer intent was. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. We, I mean, whenever we put our website together, Damon, and we're ready to move on, you know, with like hardcore SEO, you know it. We're going to be there. We're, 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 yeah. already step one. We already talked about step one. Yeah. Well, I mean, we need the website. And, uh, yeah. it, it, it has to happen. <laughs> Guys, this was so good. Damon, I appreciate you, man. Hashtag juicy, juicy today. Hashtag juicy, juicy for sure. <laughs> I mean, a new hashtag was born, guys. Hashtag blinded by the Lambo. Blinded by the Lambo. A, a new hashtag was born today. Damon, like, look at you, man. Like, congrats. And, and, can, and cancel repurposing. And, and cancel, cancel repurposing. That's right. Yes, absolutely. New, <laughs> guys, new swag coming up to uh, contentswag.com. Uh, <laughs> content <swag. laughs> Do you really have that? Contentswag.com? Uh, I'm about to, I'm yeah, about to go, about to go, buy, about right to go buy it. Yeah, <laughs> you better this, before uh, this goes live. <laughs> this is yeah. the content for all creator, guys. All the creators. Here it is. Uh, I'm looking uh, it up right now. Yeah. Content domains. Yes. Well, Fonzie looks, content domains. Content domains. <laughs> well, Fonzie... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, fun things for content swag.com. Uh, Demo, I just want to say thank you, man. Any any last thoughts that you want to share with, with the audience? It, it has been an absolute pleasure, this conversation, man. Yeah, I heard you have a workshop coming up. Tell me about that. Yes, absolutely. Thank so, you for asking. So if you are in that phase of transitioning to being a creator into a strategic creator and you actually want to turn your content into profit, we talk about the principles that move and find your intent buyer and all these principles that we talked about today. The workshop is on May 1st. You can send us a DM with the word workshop and uh, we'll get you guys in. So thank you, Damon, for, for that incredible yeah. plug. Yeah, oh, it's for hey. those people that are stuck in the yes. Yes. And go buy the book. Exactly. No, go buy go hey. it. Yes, go absolutely. Hit free, go hit freeseobook.com. There's a, mm -hmm. a free PDF download. Um, nothing on the thank you page other than an invite to a Facebook group. There's no upsell. There's nothing. Awesome. Free. You guys definitely recommend getting that and the audiobook because remember, we talked about bigger retention when you're reading and hard. listening. <laughs> so, so go get both. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't read physical books. I got to do audio. Really? I, I'm the total opposite. I need to do physical. Like fall, when I'm, when I'm listening asleep. to stuff. When I'm li- listening to stuff, like I listen to a sentence that I'm like, oh yeah, that was good, and then my mind immediately just goes into another world, and then I come back and I'm like, wait, did I just miss three chapters <laughs> what, of this? What was book? that chapter? Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh man, I need to go back all the way. Pretty much. Um, so that's why I like writing, guys. I have I have some bad news. Contentswag.com is taken. Oh. Uh, and the, the website is not even being used. It says site not found. Disgusting. Disgusting. You, need a sad, you need a sad audio clip. A sad audio clip? Yeah, like... Yeah. Yeah. You, got, oh, you got the yeah. applause. Now you need a sad one. Yeah, we're just too happy all the time. So yeah, we're just the first time we just live. I know, I know. Uh, this is a big disappointment. But you know, uh, <laughs> Damon, before we log out, I know you said go to freeseobook.com so they can go get their outrank book, of course, and also join the group. What else? How can they, uh, you know, see more of this incredible marketing strategy in this in social media that you have? Where can they connect with you? I'm most active on LinkedIn and Facebook. Just search the name Damon Burton. Awesome. Guys, I totally encourage you to go and connect with him. He is absolutely amazing. He's a lot of fun. It's very entertaining to read and see his comments Mm -hmm. and the answers that he, you know, that that he gives to people. So go check him out. Go connect with him and go ask him any SEO related questions you may have. Absolutely. Guys, thanks, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite platform and on social media at BizBrosco. That is right. And if you find today's episode impactful and it's helping you move one step closer to your goal, please don't forget to share it and and leave a five-star review. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right. Dude, that was awesome. Damon, we're still live.